What's up everybody, this is Ryan here, and today I just wanted to basically answer a question that I had on one of my YouTube videos on uh, basically what I was talking about was the open-closed principle uh, from Solid Principles in Java, and in the example I used an abstract class, uh, which is one of the ways you can achieve the open-closed principle. Anyways, the question that I received was, uh, in that particular video I said that the an abstract class was a better choice to solve the example that we have than an interface and someone just wanted me to clarify why is it the case in that particular example which I'll show in a minute um, that an abstract class is a better decision so in order to answer this question what I thought I would do is I, I would kind of explain um, where in my opinion an abstract class conceptually comes from and in order to need in order to do that I need to start by explaining what is an interface so when it comes to interfaces one of the ways I like to talk about it is that an interface allows you to share behavior but not implementation between a set of I'll just call them inheritors in Java you say implements but let's just say it's all an inherit inheritance um, whatever inherits from the interface shares the has to share the behavior of the interface and when I say behavior I mean very specifically the function or method signature but not the actual body of the method or function so the actual body of the method or function we tend to call that the implementation and implementation is basically like a pseudonym for code one of the ways you can think about it so that's when you would require an interface is when you don't actually need to share the code but just the function signature between a set of objects. Now, uh, on the other hand, when we have just typical uh, extends type inheritance in Java, so just you have a parent class and you're extending from it, uh, in that case then you're actually able to share implementation across a set of objects. So those are two, uh, two of the main points. They're, they're different approaches to solve different problems. In one case you want something to be uh, present but implemented differently. Uh, you expect a certain behavior but you don't care how that behavior basically uh, executes. And then in the other case we, we are actually concerned about literally sharing code between a set of objects so that we don't have to have that repetitious code in every object that inherits from the class. So then to get back to abstract classes, so when do we need to use an abstract class? Well it's pretty simple. So, what's the lighting adjust here? Sorry about that. Um, abstract classes can share both. So, if you're wondering what the purpose of an abstract class is, th this is exactly it. So, basically an abstract class, in my opinion, it's sort of a, a, mer a merriment between both a situation where you need some kind of interface, so you want to share behavior, but not necessarily implementation, but maybe there's also implementation that you do want to share across those objects. So in a sense, an abstract class functions basically as a combination of both a, a class and also an interface because you can have abstract functions in it. So that's basically how things work. And uh, what I'll do is I'll just kind of give you a quick uh, visual whiteboard example to show what I'm talking about. OK, so here's basically a simplified whiteboard version of the example that uh, I did in that video. So basically how it worked is we had an abstract class. Uh, I don't think I called it base exercise, but normally I do call abstract classes with the uh, base prefix, but whatever. And in that situation, we had a situation where in terms of implementation that we needed to share across a set of different types of inheritors, um, we had to share, I, I simplified it a lot, but we had to share some basically uh, member variables uh, between all kinds of exercises so if you've been following I'm keeping them color-coded so this is the implementation that we would need to share which we uh, could use a class inheritance for that just extending the base class but we also needed to share behavior 
between the set of different exercises. So then we get a situation where basically all of these objects that inherit from the abstract class are basically uh, pulling this implementation into themselves. Yeah, that's horrendously ugly, but uh, they're all stealing that implementation. And then the abstract class is saying, okay, yeah, you can have these things and you don't have to repeat them. So these things will be still usable in these classes, but the actual code won't be visible because it's implemented in the abstract class. And then for sharing the behavior, basically what the abstract class is saying is um, you need to implement uh, these this function yourself. So this one says print exercise data. That's the function that uh, prints the the exercise data. And if it's a dumbbell or a barbell exercise or a body weight exercise, that's going to change the implementation, what the output looks like. So for barbells, if we do say 30 pounds for uh, 10 repetitions, then we're counting each barbell. So then I would write say 10 repetitions at 30 pounds times two. If it was a bar barbell, I would drop the times two. If it was body weight, I wouldn't count the weight. I would literally just print out at body weight. So as you can see, we need to we need this behavior of printing the, the data, but it needs to be implemented differently in the class that extends the abstract class like so. So that's basically it. Um, so just to summarize, when would you want to use uh, an abstract class and when is it uh, a better solution than an interface? Well, you don't always need to do these two things at the same time. If you only need to share behavior, then an interface is preferable. If you only need to share uh, actual implementation, you can generally speaking just do typical inheritance. But when you have a situation where you need both the power of abstraction uh, and you also need to share code between a set of objects, then that is the use case where you would want to consider using an abstract class. So hopefully that was useful for you. If it was, do me a favor, hit the like button down below. Consider subscribing. And if you have any other questions, let me know in the comment section down below. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in another video.